I'm Manu Kakopian. Thank you for tuning in and thank you to our partners, personal injury attorney Nelson Gaborkin. Hi, everyone. I am joined by IBF super lightweight champion Liam Paro, who's getting ready to return to the ring December 7 in Puerto Rico against Richardson Hitchens. Liam, you're defending your title against a tough opponent again, right after a very tough fight against Subriel Matias. Uh, how did you land on Richardson Hitchens as the opponent in your first title defense? Look, um, not going to lie, we're looking for the big names. We're looking for the Haney's, the Lopez's, but nothing was happening. And um, I've always said I wanted to be an active champion. And after defeating Matias, I took on the mandatory and uh, Hitchens was was that guy in the number one position. So when things weren't happening, we just said we'll call on a mandatory and um, that's where we've landed. We've landed here with Hitchens and yeah, another undefeated opponent, and I'm ready. It, you're obviously, we're thinking to uh, leverage a career-defining win for a career-defining opportunity. Uh, do you think, though, Hitchens really deserves this title shot? Well, look, he's uh, he's worked his way to the mandatory spot, so um, I, I can't see why not. You know, we're going to have to deal with our mandatory sooner or later and want to get it out of the way sooner, you know, and I'm excited for this fight. I really am. It's... Uh, I think it's a fight I can make a good statement. It's a good name. And, yeah, I'm excited to uh, to defend the throne and show everyone that I'm going to be at the top of this division for years to come. What did you make of Hitchinson's last performance against Gustavo Lemos, especially since we saw Lemos get knocked out by Keyshawn Davis uh, last week? Yeah, look, it didn't um, it didn't do him any favours. I think, I believe, like myself and 90% of the world thought he got defeated in that fight and was gifted the decision. But, hey... It is what it is. It's in the past, and now he's got the the opportunity to um to face a real battle tested one forty champion and and see where he's at. He's obviously, uh, like you said, earned the opportunity. Just twenty seven years old, undefeated. What do you think are the challenges and the complications Richardson presents? Look, he's a good boxer. He's got a good jab. Um, look, he, yeah, he's, he's there for a reason. He's undefeated for a reason. Um. So look, we're just yeah, we we got everything um worked out in the gym. We've got all bases covered. You know, my coach Alfie decarlo has got a good game plan and we're just gonna execute that. You know, I don't want to give too much away. We know what we've got to do to be successful. We believe in this fight. So we're um two and a half weeks away from showing that. But look, any fight is dangerous, especially at this top level, everyone can fight. So we are we've never looked on a never overlooked an opponent. We're never going to. We're uh going in there hundred and ten percent like every other fight and yeah, God willing, doing it in dominating fashion. How would you rate your confidence right now coming off of that massive win against Subriel Matias? Look, it, it, it is a confidence booster, but it's the same for me. I've still got the contender mindset. I'm going to have the contender mindset until the day I retire. There's still more and more to achieve. So, look, yes, winning the, the belt was unbelievable. It opens a lot more doors, gives us pulling power, but I'm only just getting started here. So, um. I'm ready to keep steamrolling forward and showing these guys that I'm here to stay. Everyone build up Matias as uh, the monster of the division, and you just negated everything he brought to the table that night. Um, could you just assess your performance now that you've had a few months to sit on it? Was it everything you did, or did you just make take Matias out of the fight? Um, look, we just had a good game plan. And that goes back to my coach, Alfie DiCarlo. I've said for years we've got the best team in the world and we're just proving to everyone what we already knew. You know, we knew we had the self-belief, the grit, the determination and the heart to uh to get it done and the skill. And and we did that. You know, we did what we had to do. We're good at adjusting and adapting in the ring. And yeah, look, we, we did what we had to do. We knew we, the task ahead of us was hard. You know, he's making five guys previous to me quit on the stool and I believe he just won again and he's he's fight after mine with a second round knockout. So he's back to his winning ways, but it just shows the level we're at. And um a lot of people tend to overlook us and look, that's their fault. That's they find out the hard way when it's too late, once it's in the ring, that maybe really we are that good. So um yeah, like I said, it's just um it was an unbelievable uh, performance and we did what we had to do to get the job done that night and yeah, now it's that's in the past and now yeah, my my uh Thoughts are strictly on Richardson Hitchens and and getting the job done once again. And here you are back in Puerto Rico for this fight. How did this fight end up in Puerto Rico? 
look, we were, to be honest, we were looking for the big fights and yeah, um, it just didn't happen. And um, we called on a mandatory early. Like I said, we wanted to be busy and um, he was, he was scheduled to face Pedraza in Puerto Rico that the card was already matched with, with matchroom and the 10 week time we, we pulled, um, we called our mandatory on. It wasn't enough time to, to schedule and, and promote a card elsewhere in the world. So we went back to Puerto Rico and, I think it works out good going back to the country that gave me the opportunity to become champion, to go back and um, God willing, win some more more fans over will will mean a lot to me. And of course, if you beat Hitchens uh, in 2025, it really, the world is your oyster, as they say. What is the conversations you and Eddie Hearn have been having? Look, it's, um, I, don't, I don't look past no fights, you know. Like I said, my target's locked on Hitchens' head. And um, he's only at this time, and we're two and a half weeks away from that. But look, the 140 pound division is absolutely stacked. There's some big names, big opportunities. And yeah, like I said, I, I take out Hitchens, and I think a big homecoming in Australia is definitely on the cards. Opponent, there's there's names to be, many names to be mentioned. But yeah, I think that's the main goal is bringing the big fight back to Australia. The Aussie fans deserve it. I think I deserve it from being on the road for so many years. And yeah, I think that's. That's the um, angle we'll we'll go to. Is that going to be Haney? I know Eddie Hearn has talked about Devin Haney being the future opponent for you. Is that the plan? Um, look, I, I have no idea. You know, Haney's up in the clouds still a little bit after the Garcia thing. So whoever it is, when we're ready to fight, and if he's ready, 100% I welcome that fight with open arms. But we'll just have to wait and see. Like I said, I'm strictly on Hitchens now. And if I don't get him out of the way, those opportunities... I'm um, going the back foot for a couple of years, I believe. So, um, yeah, it's all about putting on a dominating performance and showing these guys that I'm at the top on December 7. Obviously, Haney, he's a known commodity in Australia, beating Cambosis twice and becoming the undisputed lightweight champion there. But if Haney's unavailable, I mean, Ryan Garcia, he seems to be a world superstar at this point as well, too. Which fight would you naturally prefer? Who, who is, if there was one opponent, for that homecoming fight where it is that stadium fight, who would it be against? 100% Ryan Garcia. If he made 140 comfortable, why not? You know, he, he beat Haney. Yes, there's all their talks about what happened, but the world seen what happened there in the fight. So I would like to get the Garcia fight. He's a massive name, but but he has to make 140 comfortably and um, yeah, under the IBF rules. So it is what it is. I'd like the, I'd like the Garcia fight. We'd pack out a stadium in Australia for sure. But it would have to be 140 on the dot, right? It, 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 you, no, nothing heavier than that. It seems like Garcia uh, wants to fight at a different weight. Um, he's thrown 154 all the way up there. So it, who knows if he could make 140 at this point. That's right. But like, look, if they wanted a heavier weight, they'd have to dangle some serious carrots. <laughs> Absolutely. Who, now, there's, of course, Tiafima Lopez, too, who's universally considered the top 140-pound fighter. Who, and the 140-pound is wide open. We see everyone is, could be beat on any given night. Who do you think is the best 140-pounder in the world outside of you? Um, look, maybe I do believe Tio's up there. You know, he's, he's a tremendous fighter. Um, but, yeah, like you said, he's, he can get beaten on any given night. I believe he's very hot and cold. Um, but yeah, other than myself, without being cocky, I think, yeah, Tiafimo Lopez would have to be there. Do you think he's the same fighter as he was when he beat Lomachenko? Um, look, I'm not sure. I think going up in the weight, he hasn't really scored any big one punch knockouts. He's gone been going all the distance lately. So I'm not sure, like, but I'm not taking anything away from him. He's a hell of a fighter and hope to square off in the ring with him in the near future. You're obviously... Uh, this win against Hitchens would really just blow you up uh, as another big star in Australian boxing. It seems as if uh, wh whoever gets up there can't hold the throne, whether it be Cambosis or Tim Zhu recently. And you have the opportunity to really uh, be the flag bearer right now for the sport. How important and motivating is that to you? Well, it's very motivating. You know, there's a massive wave of Aussie talent coming through now on the world stage and to be at the top of that is uh, is truly is humbling and it's a good blessing. And like you said, I, I want to hold the flag and bear the flag for, for years to come. So, uh, and I believe in uh, taking out an undefeated Hitchens would um, definitely certify my name there. Do you think also 
a statement win against Hitchens, maybe a knockout would put you on the short list for fighter of the year? Uh, most definitely. Well, the, the upset of the year is definitely there with the Matias win. And um, why not take two titles out with the fighter of the year too? I, I'd happily take that. But yeah, look, if the knockout's there, I'll definitely take it. But I'm happy to, uh, to get the win by any means necessary. Let's talk about it. How do you, how are you going to beat Hitchens? Like I said, we've got a good game plan in the gym, but um, my mental my mental game's way better than his. You know, there's there's the word on the street is he's a quitter, and I believe once a quitter, always a quitter. So I'm going to really test him, and I'm not the person you want to be testing your mental strength on in the ring. It's going to be a long night in the office. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? The the quitting element to things. Uh, what have just, you been hearing? Just yeah, word on the street is just he he quits. He's uh. The front runner, you know what I mean? So uh, I believe if he doesn't get his way, it's going to be my night. I believe it's going to be my night no matter what. But, yeah, it's just, look, we're going to wait and see. We're going to wait and see. I just, I'll, we'll just show to the world, you know. I'm, I'm not a big talker. My actions speak for themselves, and I've showed that in previous fights. So I just really believe I'm going to take this guy to deep water and drown him.